Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Miss B and uh, today I'm gonna go through 2017 um, SACE exam questions, question 5 and 6. So the first one that we have here is the graph of the curve. Um, it's given below so and the um, domain is x between 0 and 3. Um, point A and B lie on the curve, so we have point A and point B, and one more piece of information that point A is the only point of inflection. So point A is only point of inflection. So we do know at this point that um, the shape is going to change, so shape, change of shape, change of shape, so which uh, means um, the shape is going to go either from convex to concave or concave to convex. Let's have a look what we have before uh, point A. So let's have a look what's happening here. So it does look like um, convex. So And we do know when we have um, convex that second derivative, looking at the shape, um, second derivative is bigger than zero. So if we have um, this shape and also we do know if we have concave concave I'm gonna have here so which is this part here between A and B so we will have um, the second derivative is less than zero and why I'm writing bigger than zero so let's erase that second derivative second derivative is less than zero. So um, looking at this graph we can see that the slope of the function is increasing so it's it's positive so in uh, between zero x equal to zero and um, 3.5 but um, just one more thing before we move on um, um, it says here that the point A is the only point of um, inflection. So we do know that, um, you know, where the slope at this point is at the maximum uh, value of g de dash of x. So the point of inflection, it does tell us that the slope of this, this function is at the maximum. So we also know when we have the point of inflection that second derivative is equal to zero. Now let's have a look how we can use this information. Um, which one of the following statement is true? Tick the appropriate box and justify your answers. So we do have first derivative at one, it's less than first derivative at two, first derivative at 1 is equal to first derivative at 2. We can eliminate this one straight away because we, we just said that um, when x is equal to 1, that the slope is at the maximum. So eliminate that one. And um, let's have a look what is happening here. So the last one uh, statement says that the slope at 1 is bigger than the slope at 2. Now we have only two choices um, because we eliminated one and um, because we said before that at point A is the maximum rate of change. So therefore we can eliminate the first one here because it says at 1 it's less than at 2. So no. So we would have to choose um, the last one. This one would be correct. And um, to justify, we already talked about that. So you can say A is the point of inflection. So therefore, at this point, um, the slope is at the maximum of um, G dash of X. Um, so, and therefore, you know, the slope is bigger at when x is equal to 1. Let's have a look at the next one, this one here. Which one of the following statement is true? Tick appropriate box. Um, 
uh, and justify your answer. So we have now second derivative at one is less than zero. So we know that's not true because we mentioned before that point A is the only point of inflection. And we do know when we have point of inflection that the second derivative is equal to zero. So I'm just gonna have a look at the last one. Second derivative one is bigger than zero. No, let's cross that one out. So, and we're gonna choose um, second derivative is equal to zero at one because this is the point of inflection. Okay, um, part C, which one of the following statement is true? Tick the appropriate box and justify your answers. So now we have all these um, uh, point two and second derivatives at point two. So we do know to start with that uh, when x is equal to two, second derivative is not equal to zero because we only have one point of inflection. And what we're looking now, if second derivative is less than zero or bigger than zero, we're looking at the shape, which we have you know, mentioned before. So if shape is concave, second derivative is less than zero. If shape is convex, second derivative is bigger than zero. Now let's have a look. Second derivative at two is less than zero. Let's have a look. Second derivative at two is less than zero. Oh, it does look like it. So because we have that shape. Before we make final decision, let's just check you know, the last bit, this one here. Second derivative is bigger than zero. So yeah, we know it's not true. So we're gonna cross that one out. And when you justify your answer, um, all you have to say, um, you have to mention that g of x is concave at x equal to two. Concave, concave. Okay, at x equal to 2. Okay, that would be um, all for this question. Let's move to the other one. So the owner of a local pet food shop is offering an incentive program to attract customers. So the shop owner has placed 50 balls in a bucket. Each one is labeled with a percentage discount that customer will be given after they purchase. And um, so the customer will draw a ball randomly from the bucket and then the percentage, um, you know, displayed, um, it's going to be applied. Uh, the ball is then placed back in the bucket before the next customer draws a ball. So um, we have all together 50, so of the 50 balls, one is labeled 100%, two out of 50 are labeled 50, 4 out of 50 are labeled 25, and 8 are labeled 20. So the remaining 35 balls are labeled 10% um, discount. So what is the probability that customer will draw the ball label 100% discount? So what do we have to look is um, the total number, which is can we see that? It's 50, yeah, it's here. So um, 50 balls, and now have a look how many uh, will be labeled 100% discount, and it says um, one. So therefore, probability is gonna be equal one over 50. So first part is that. So um, some people prefer um, decimal places. Let's put decimal places 0 0.02, okay? That one is that. Now part B, if 500 customers each draw one ball from the bucket, what is the probability that more than 10 of these customers will draw the ball label 100% discount? So more than 10, more than 10. So let's have a look. So uh, we can see that um, this is gonna be binomial distribution. So as independence can be assumed uh, because the balls are replaced after each selection. 
So let's x, and we're just gonna use x because you know that's the most common one that we use. Um, label as the number of customers who draw the ball. So um, that's gonna be 100%. Um, and the order dimension is gonna be binomial. So the first uh, number, uh, it's n, which is the number of childs. In our case, it's 500, and then probability, which is 0 0.02. Now, how are we gonna calculate this? So it depends um, on the calculator that you have. So um, I'm gonna go with um, this one. I'm gonna start with this, the more than 10. Some calculators, what is the probability that more than 10 of this will be drawn, more than 10? Um, which means 10 is not included, so we can say x is bigger or equal to 11, so n is equal to. So, and then you're gonna use b, c, d. Some calculators have option of doing this. So I don't have that calculator in front of me. Um, to give you exact informations, um, but maybe at some stage I can record that as well. So, and it's going to give you approximation of 0 0.417. Now, this is the one way of doing it. Some calculators don't have um, these options, so therefore, I'm going to use this color, um, or um, you can calculate by uh, probability x is bigger than 10. So we do know this is the same as one take away probability that x is less or equal to 10. Um, this part here, it means that from the whole probability, you're gonna take away the probability that x is gonna be equal or less than 10. Um, if you pay attention here to this question, uh, what they're asking to do, more than 10. That's why here we are eliminating 10 as well. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, but um, usually for this one, I use you know the number line as well um, to show um, how we do eliminate some numbers. Okay, let's move on to the last part of this question. Now, um, the shop owner um, would like to, you know, offer alternative incentive program. So, and this one um, would be 15% discount and given to all customers. Now, what he wants to do, he wants to see in the long run, which one, um, you know, of these two incentive schemes will cost him more. So he does want to give discount, but you know he's trying not to lose too much money too. So now we're gonna compare, you know, um, what the mean would be on the long run. So we are looking for the expected value, isn't it? So we are looking at expected value of x. Oops, I did that on purpose. Now um, I'm gonna change. Um, this I'm going to actually first cross it. Yes, we do need expected value, but we have already used x um, as the number of customers um, who draw the ball um, in the previous question. So now um, let's use different variables. So we're going to use um, the next one that we usually use is y. So in this case, y um, rep represent the percentage discount given to customers. So and we already said this is the expected value. Um, because we can't see the numbers, maybe I can draw here table. So um, x, if it's gonna be 100 on the ball, it's gonna be 50 and 25. Um, and now we have probabilities, uh, 150. We have already uh, seen this one. Um, probability is going to be 50, we looked in the number of the balls, and it says 2 in the previous page, 2 out of 50, and for 25, um, it says, I have to have a look, 25, it's 4, 4 out of 50, and it looks like I need um, one more here, is 
20% 20% discount and for 20% discount is 8 out of 50 and plus one more so um, is 10% discount and that's for the rest and the number of the rest is 35 out of 50 so the tables my table doesn't look the best but you know I haven't planned to draw it so um, maybe I'm gonna move this expression um, here so um, if I need more space so let's try doing this so um, this is the mean this is the sum of all x's and probability is i when i is equal to 1 and n and so on so um, let's do it so the first one I'm gonna go 100 times 150 then plus 50 times 2 over 50 plus 25 um, okay let's uh, be consistent so let's be consistent go back so we have done this one so that's done we have done this one now let's do the third one plus we have 25 okay so plus 25 times 4 over um, 50 then plus um, this one here 20 so we know 20 no, no, 20 times 8 out of 50 and then plus the last one here so 10 no, I have the same color 10 times 35 over 50 now if you do calculate this um, you should get answer 16.2 yeah. now we have to make decision which uh, one of these two intensive schemes will cause the shop owner more since our answer is 16.2 and we do know 16.2 is bigger than 15 so what does it mean so the shop owner you know is looking for this incentive program you know to give 15 percent discount to all customers but what actually is happening on the long run so the expected value on the uh, long run um it has shown that the discount given to customer is go, gonna customers is gonna be sixteen point two. So based on this, you know, um, the shop owner has realized that it would cost him more on the long run. So that would be all for this question. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.